Hey, what is up? Today we are talking about one of the key insights into why we want things. Not only that, but why we tend to get in fights and altercations. And that is called mimetic desire. Mimetic desire is us copying each other. And it can be seen in children and other species. And really, as we'll explore, it's at maybe the core of everything that we want and the decisions that we make on a day-to-day -day basis. So, I am walking through the forest with my, my boy Marv, and let's go. Welcome to another episode of Nature Talks. So why do we copy each other? It seems pretty intrinsic to want what other people have. It probably one of the bigger psychological downsides to just being on something like Instagram. Instagram is, is almost like the social media app for coveting. So why do we copy each other? Copying implies that we want what someone else has. Another word for that is just desire. So we desire what other people have. This is pretty natural. We can see it even with different uh, species, such as our, our close neighbors in the chimp gene pool. They tend to want to copy each other. They also know what it's like to have a fair trade there have been scientific experiments. If you give one chimp one reward for an action that they take, and you give another one a better reward for the same action, they will get upset. So there's something very genetic to these, these habits that we seem to be trapped by. But to take it back to desire, desire is just a word for wanting what other people have. There was a French philosopher, he passed away only in the last decade, but he has been one of the most influential people uh, that no one's ever heard of. And I think that he's going to be more and more important as time goes on. His name is René Girard. He came up with the concept of mimetic desire. I'm always attracted to anything that has meme in the, the, uh, the name. I love Terrence McKenna talks when he talks about memes. He was way before his time in the 90s. So is Rene Girard. He outlined what mimetic desire is. So to take those words, mimetic, so meme, it is a replicatable idea version of a consumable piece of information. And desire, so desire, is, as we said, is wanting something in its purest form. So mimetic desire is something that we can see in ourselves to test desire itself. Uh, scientists, researchers, they put five of the same exact toys in front of five different children. They'd never seen each other before or seen that toy before. And the curious thing about those research experiments is that the first child that chose a toy immediately sparked desire in the other infants. The children didn't necessarily see five different toys of the same type and say, hooray, and uh, all split the toys evenly. After the first child chose one of the, the toys and showed desire towards it, all the other kids wanted that toy. This is what mimetic desire is. It is a human signal of choice. And when we create that signal, other people around us see that and now want to desire that object more. So there's an object, there is a action of choosing, and that signal 
then cues to people around us that that is a desirable choice. If you watched our last video on second order effects, what's a second order effect of desiring that object? It is now you coming over and wanting it. There's only one object and now there are two people, maybe more. In the case of the infants, there were five. So now there are five infants that want that same toy. The interesting thing about that is it has a compounding effect. When those other children show their desire, the original says, aha, I made the right choice. It's curious. You can see how this plays a role in basically all marketing, all advertising. You could basically boil down marketing and advertising down to showing others an object of desire. You can buy a really nice car for, for much less than you used to. The K900 Kia, often unheard of, that's a really nice car. LeBron James drives it. Used, you can buy that car for 20K. That's the same amount of value, same amount of luxury, same amount of features, for the most part, is a $100,000 Mercedes-Benz. So why does a Mercedes-Benz carry so much more value? A lot of this is just the mimetic desire and signaling effect. All right, let's go. Wait, 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 wait. What's up, man? Yo, bro, nice shirt. Where'd you get that? Yeah, hey, why do you want now? Oh, uh, for real, I'm looking to cop that shit. I grew up on those streets, my dude. So what? You just grew up the same way that I did, huh? Just grew up on the same, these same streets? These wheels are clean, my dude. What kind of car is this? God, give me one of these, bro. You just trying to jack my whole vibe here, or what? I'm looking to cop that shit, my bro. Right, here, take this shirt. Sure. Sure. I don't even care. Take this damn shirt. You want my girl too, huh? What, for real? Now that you mention it, I was gonna ask you that next. Shit. It's like you read my mind and shit. Are you just a duplication of the modeled world around you? Unconsciously valuing things based on others' example? What kind of dog is that anyways? I'll fight you. Politics is another huge one where this insight is just super important. Is that another effect of mimetic desire intrinsically that Rene Girard uncovered is that desiring the same thing causes polarization. So you end up with two groups that increasingly desire the same object. So in politics, one example might be the presidency. So you have the presidency that is one object of desire and in all of the things that go with it. There, there's a reason why it's desired. But increasingly, you have polarized parties that basically you get in a tit-for-tat exchange. And one of the other interesting key insights of Rene Girard is that desire is at the root of a lot of violence and a lot of anger. When more than one people, or in this case, two groups of people, two organizations desire the same object, they increasingly signal to each other how desirable that object is, and that ramps up the anger and competition between the two. And so this, this one insight is really important in that we can start to think about why we desire things in our own life. One of the takeaways from, from this that I have really tried to, tried to reflect on and take action in my own life is just how important it is to not want the same things as everyone else. So whether it is macro politics or trying to lower the competition and, and sort of like desirable competitive angst that we feel on a day-to-day -day basis is just to understand how intrinsically human it is to desire the same thing as each other and how the more that we do that, the, the more that we end up feeling bad or, or getting into conflict. So unmasking 
human psychology in this way can be really beneficial so that we take a different path than everyone else. And I truly, just through my own life, I truly believe that it's much more rewarding as well. I think this is one of the key insights into how humans work. Next time that you're driving around, just just look around and and, and notice that each of those symbols and badges and, and things that that other people have represent a signal that is being sent to us to potentially respond in an unconscious desire. And the more that we can be aware of just how natural that is, the more we can chill out on it and go our own way. So, Marvy, this dog sat here like a really good boy this whole time, and uh, stay brave. If you enjoyed these nature talks, hit like and subscribe and let us know in the comments section. You can also join our online community at discord.shirtwascash.com or learn more about what we're about at manifesto.shirtwascash.com. We are also offering limited edition apparel with our new YouTube channel at episodes.shirtwascash.com. Thank you and stay brave.